Right, it's 11 minutes to 11. A huge trawler has been fishing off the south coast of England the last few days, much to the annoyance of local fishermen, conservationists and politicians. Uh, the Margaris, which is Lithuanian registered but owned by the Dutch, can catch and process around 250 tonnes of fish a day. It's believed to be the second biggest fishing boat in the world. But the authorities say it's doing nothing illegal, as it is complying with EU fishing laws, which gives EU countries a quota of fish they can catch in European waters. So under Brexit, will Britain have more powers to stop boats, such as the Margaris? June Mummery MEP is the fishery spokesperson for the Brexit party. Good evening to you, June. Good evening, Stephen. Good evening. And Chris Davis is a Lib Dem MEP and chairs the Commons Fishery Committee. Good evening to you, Chris. It's the European Parliament's Fisheries Committee, actually. My no. fault, Chris. Sorry. Good evening. Hi. Um, so, so, will Brexit give any more powers in a situation like this, Chris? Um, not really, because the reason that the way in which the quota is divided is decided by London, not by Brussels. So, what is happening um, with this? rather gigantic vessel is, uh, is is a matter for UK policy, not for European policy. And, and so it's extraordinary, surely, that they are doing this while complying with EU fishing laws, but after we're out of the EU, it won't make any difference, Chris. Well, let's look how this works. Now, June can perhaps correct me, but as I understand it, uh, the, the, the arrangement is this. The European Union... Um, has for the past, since the 1970s, divided up quota between different countries. And then how, how that quota is used is up to each country to determine. Um, and I think, and I'm not quite sure about this, but I think this vessel is, although Dutch-owned, is actually uh, using British quota, which has been given it by the British, un- under British arrangements, been transferred from other which is vessels, under arrangements which have been approved by the British government. June? What does yes, this actually... yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, well, let's get this quite straight, shall we then? Got gigantic, yes, that's 14 times the size of the average UK fishing boat, 460 foot long with a net 1,900 feet long in length. It's uh, the Margaret. She, uh, she's been kicked out of various countries, Australia, uh, controversy in Chile over it, over exploitation of fish stocks in West Africa. She's a fl- flagship, Stephen. She's a flagship, which is a ship owned by a company in one EU member state, but operated under the flag of another member state, which is common under the CFP, Common Fisheries Policy. And these vessels are known as flagships. Often, um, flagships provide little to no economic link to the port of the country where they are res- uh, registered. So this ship, for example, is Lithuanian owned, well, du- owned by the Dutch as a flagship through the Lithuanian, as fishing in our waters. And um, yet again, Chris, you always hear me bang on about this. It's not what you catch, it's what you kill. Um, Stephen, the bycatch, I mean, the, the, let's get, uh, let me just take you f- through this. This ship is catching mackerel and herring. But it's the bycatch species at risk in the channel waters, which include John Dory, common dolphins, bluefin tuna. And the big one is sea bass, which local fishermen are already banned from catching. But isn't one of the big problems here that the actual fishing quotas have been sold off by this country, by the UK? So even if we claim back our waters, to use your lingo, we don't necessarily own the quotas, Jen. No, once we leave the CFP, we can uh, take back control of those quotas. There's different can we? Ways have we not sold them off? We already, we already have, as you know, we already have control or we could have control of the quotas. I mean, we do things completely differently in the UK from they do in France, for example. I mean, France, yeah. France they, you know, they, they, they don't sell off their quotas in France as they do in the UK. No, 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 no. we're the only country in the world that did that. Yeah, we're the only yeah. country in the world. I mean, yeah. yeah, it's a terrible thing that happened. A few companies and larger operators did sell fishing opportunities to EU companies and others were bought out. However... It is the fault of the legacy parties that made up consecutive governments for allowing fishing opportunities to become a tradable commodity. Like I just said, no other country does this. And, for no, and, and we haven't, and they didn't address this issue. 
However, the vast majority of the UK fleet, the 4,500 boats that make up the small-scale fleet, were never allocated quota to sell out, as their catch was not measured and they were not allowed to establish yeah. a track record. But you, do you so, know I you and I are in, in, in much agreement here. I think we're also in agreement that this, this vessel is, just the sheer size of it, is, it just seems obscene, frankly. Very what alarming. Matters, I think, what, I think... what, what matters, what matters you know, so far as rebuilding our fish stocks and preventing overfishing is whether or not it, it is overfishing. And it's almost certainly not. I mean, the quota is allocated. The total allowable catch is defined. Um, it, as, far as, as far as I can see, British inspectors have been on board it. So it's not actually, it's not over. Yeah, but hang on a minute, Chris. Well, hold, hang hold on, on one, no, sec- one on, second, no, one on, second, Chris. because I think it's we can get a sense. We, we keep Sorry, on talking no, about the scale of, of, of this boat. I think we can get a sense of it from John Hurston tonight from the Blue yeah. Planet Society. Good yeah. evening to you, John. Good evening. Good evening. Can you explain to our listeners why this trawler is so different to other vessels? Yes, well, it's, um, it's about 10,000 tonnes. It's 142 metres long. It can carry 6,200 tonnes of fish on board, and it processes 250 tonnes of fish per day. So it stays out at sea, and it sweeps along the channel, and it can stay out there until that shoal of fish that it's hitting has gone, effectively. Whereas the smaller um, fishing boats have got to go back to port, offload their fish, come back, fish again and go back and so forth. So um, it, it's highly unsustainable. Well, you see, I mean, the tra- and it's, been joined, the it's been joined, John, hasn't it, by 14 other smaller trawlers? And these appear to be British vessels. Yes, it, uh, that happened um, today. Or so uh, as far as I can tell, that seems to be a bit of tr- the tragedy of the commons. What they're doing is they're seeing a Dutch trawler 12 miles off their coast, taking what they feel to be their fish stocks, and they're joining it because if they don't take them, they're going to be taken by somebody else. Well, Gordon Strachan also with us, an ex-troller man. Hello, Gordon. Hello. You were out on on the channel just yesterday, I believe. Is that right? Yes, I was. So what's your view on this, Gordon? Uh, Well, to be honest, a boat that size, the bycatch alone will devastate the channel. The channel's been vastly overfished for years now from the EU boats. 75% of the EU quota, if I was talking to some French fishermen and that, and they were saying they catch 75% of their quota in British waters. You know, if you go back to the days of in the seventies when I first started at sea, you know, from a wee kid, uh, my family was uh, we relied on that. Now, and we've watched families disappear off the planet, basically, mm. and the boats being scrapped, and the government selling a quota abroad. And if I were and, to ask you, Gordon, to sum up the state of British fishing at the moment, what would you tell me? Cod stocks, for example, is there much to fish in the channel? There has not been a cod caught in the channel from the beach in the last three and a half years. What? No. Well, that's, that's not actually true. Was, that is it. was, it's, it's not. It's not true. Uh, can I just say also, the, the uh, we had a problem, with, particularly with North Sea cod. You know, we were building up the stocks, and, and we've had a, the scientists are telling us now there's a there's a serious problem again. But Excuse across me. the wa- across 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 the waters, all around the British coast, all around Northern Europe, there's about 81 measured stocks. Now, 10 years ago, only five of those were being fished sustainably. Now the, the Reuters records say that 59 of the 81 are being fished sustainably. And most of the, the outstanding ones are ones we share with Norway, where we haven't got proper agreements in, in place yet. So, you know, just to just remember, the, the situation yeah. is actually better so far as, uh, in most stocks than they were 10 years ago. That's a different yeah, argument that's, that's altogether also- to, having mon- to having monstrous boats like this. I mean, that's a... That, and, uh, you know, I really think the, the UK, the British government has got to look at the way it, uh, it allocates its, uh, its, its quotas and the arrangement it does for that, which has advantages. I mean, one of the advantages is, is it, it, gives, it, gives, it, it encourages fishermen, the fishing co- no, not so much fishermen, the fishing companies that own these boats to think about the fact they're going to be, they have a possession here, this quota, they can sell it. No, Chris, it's we valuable. want to get rid of it. They want, they want, they want, okay, they let's want say, let's say, let June Mummery respond now. 
Go on, Jen. No, and the Chris has got it so wrong. We want out of that CFP. We want to take yeah. back full no, control not, of our that's waters. Not, that's, I'm not Hang disagreeing on, Chris, with that. Hold on, let's let her finish. Let's let, let, let her finish, finish Chris. You're not in a committee now. I can talk. Right. <laughs> yeah, not that you don't let me. But, but listen, once we leave the EU, we can take full control of our waters. We want a sustainable fisheries in our country. We want boats 20 to 25 metres long, no bigger than 500 But you, we can do that pounds. now. We have the we we can have the UK the UK no, the Chris, UK we've got UK no government. fish to catch because we've given it all away, Chris, and you know we have. Yeah, Once but, we uh, leave uh, that dreaded, awful EU and then bring back the control of our fisheries, we can start. But the British the fishing bank. industry, okay, June, really was in decline. The British fishing yeah. industry was in decline, June, before the Common Fisheries Policy was introduced. No, it wasn't. Yeah, no, I, no. Yeah, what, 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 when was this? Before oh, the Commons Fishery come, Policy come was introduced. Steve, Stephen and, all, and the other gentleman, I think Gordon will agree with me, that was in the past. We talked about the future. I'm fed up with all what happened back in the 70s. We know what happened. We know things are wrong. We've got a golden opportunity now to rejuvenate coastal communities. We've been starved and enough's enough. The sooner we get yeah. out of the EU, the sooner we get back our control of our waters, our fish, we can start creating jobs now and for future generations. That's but as simple fish, as that. Fish, Very quickly, Chris, there, 10 seconds. Chris Davis. It has been for years. Just a fact. And, you know, um, the most important thing is to stop overfishing, keep building up our fish stocks and recognise that fish don't recognise okay. national boundaries. June John, Chris and Gordon. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> 